All right, so we're going to tackle our last three definitions, uh, which refer to a type of tree. So full trees, perfect trees, and complete binary trees. Now, these are different ways of describing diff uh, uh, types of binary trees. Full and perfect, you're gonna see those are very easy. Complete, I personally think that's easy. I've seen some students have tr some trouble with understanding what that one is, but Overall, that's not the most, it's not really a difficult um, one, and these will probably be on the exam. I believe like last year what I asked was to give me an example of each of these trees. So a full binary tree is a binary tree where either, where all the nodes have either two children or zero children. So here in this example, we can see that three has the child two and five, five has the children two, uh, four and six. 10 has the children, 9 and 12. 11 has no children, 13 has no children. All the nodes here have either two children or no children. If they're a leaf, they have no children. And if they're not a leaf, they're an internal node. In that case, they have just, they have always have two children, right? Um, let's see if I can't modify the slide, right? If I were to delete, let's see. If I were to delete 13 over here, boom, it's no longer a full tree. Why? Because 12 has only one child. It has a left child. You have to have both children or no children. It's everything or nothing in this case. Okay? So that's a full tree. Easy definition right there. So perfect a, um, is fairly straightforward to understand visually. It's one of those one, ones you understand more visually, and the mathematical definition is just a roundabout way of saying it. A perfect binary tree is one that is full and it's of height n with exactly two to the n minus one nodes. So for instance, this is a height three, right? A one, two, three levels. So its height is three and it has two to the n. So uh, there's three levels. So two to the third, that's eight minus one nodes, right? So we have seven nodes in this tree. Now, if you think about it, since this is height three and there's seven nodes, that's the maximum possible nodes a, um, a tree of height three could have. So height four, the maximum possible nodes would be 15, right? Because that would be two children here, two children here, two children here, two children here. So basically we've got an entire, this entire bottom layer would be filled up, okay? So essentially every level of the tree would be filled so we'd have four children so we'd have eight children over here and if it was height five we'd have 16 children below that and below that we'd have 32 children right and there wouldn't be any gaps kind of over here so that's kind of where the perfect perfects are they look basically you know like they're the example the perfect example of a tree so complete is kind of weird they're perfect up through n, level n minus one, except with a, uh, except with an extra leaf. Sorry, sorry, with some extra leaf nodes at level n, all towards the left. So um, there are a couple cases where basically I want to just kind of show that off. So this is not a complete tree, okay? And in fact, um, this is a complete tree. It also happens to be perfect. Um, so what does so what would a complete tree look like? Well, an example of a complete tree is essentially that we're perfect of at all levels except for the bottom level. And the bottom level, it's all either all the way filled in or almost all the way filled in. So over here, right, this is an example. Whoops. This would be an example of a complete tree. Right? This level is filled in perfectly, but this level we've got some gaps over here. Right, we've got some empty slots that we could slide a, um, a node into. We could slide a node into over here. We can slide a node into over here. Um, and it looks like that. Now, if we were to put a node over here, it would no longer be per, uh, complete um, because we'd have a gap over here. So, so all the nodes have to be filled in from the left to the right. Let's look at some more examples because I feel like this is the type of thing that becomes way more clear with examples. Okay, let's see. So this is a not a complete tree. If I were to have, however to put a node here and a node here, so if zero were to have both a left child and right child, 
still would not be complete because nine would also have to have children. So we'd have to put those in too, and then it would be complete. Um, if on the other hand, the tree looked like this, and we put a node here and here, then it would be complete because we'd have one, two, three, four, and then on nodes over here on the left, it would be perfect over here, and this would be completely empty over here. Let's look at an example, right? Notice the difference between the perfect tree the difference between a perfect tree and a complete tree in this example was basically just removing that six over here. All right, we just simply removed this six over here. Um, this is a complete tree. This is not a complete tree. All the nodes have to be towards the left. So if we took a node over here and moved it over here, right? Keep it, ignore the fact that the values are wrong for a binary search tree. If we just simply move that node over here, this is a complete tree. This is a complete tree. This is a complete tree. Okay. This is not a complete tree. And if I were to remove this entire branch over here, right, this is certainly not a complete tree because uh, there's no longer a, um, because, you know, this is no longer perfect over here. Okay. Now, you might be wondering why we're dealing with binary trees and, and not uh, general trees. In other words, trees that can have any number of children like this, right? Right here is a, you know, the family tree of a bunch of uh, English monarchs, starting from William I with their children, William II, uh, William II and Henry I, right? Um, right, general tree here, you can have any number of uh, subtrees. This is the kind of uh, tree you might see in a family tree. And the reason is, is because any tree we have can actually be converted into a binary tree. So watch this is, I, I actually think this is a pretty cool magic trick over here. Um, so watch this tree and I'll flip it back and forth between these slides. And they flip this tree by basically saying that the left branch of a node is its oldest child and your right branch is connected to your younger sibling. So look at this, William the first, right, is con his, uh, to the left is his, is his oldest child, and then that happens to be Robert, right? And Robert's right branches are all, right? Robert over here, his right branch connects to William, which is his younger sibling, which connects to Adela, which is his younger sibling, and Henry I, which is her younger sibling, right? We flip back to here. Notice that that was that diagonal line, right? And so we took this uh, tree and we just kind of just rotated it on its head. So you can take these trees and just turn them into binary trees anyway. So it makes um, a heck of a lot more of sense just to learn how to deal with binary trees and then we, if we have to, we can reduce these general trees into binary trees if we have to.